As an Android TV developer, you've dedicated time and effort to create a great watching experience for your users. Currently, with Google Cast, users are able to cast to Android TV to watch their content and use their phone to control playback. While this provides users with an easy way to quickly jump right into their content, we also want them to be able to control their TV with their remote like we're all accustomed to. Cast Connect bridges this gap to your native experience, allowing users to cast directly into your native Android TV app then they can either pick up their remote or use their phone to continue to interact. Hi, I'm James Romo from the Nest Partner Engineering Team, and I'm going to tell you about Cast Connect, the solution to seamlessly combine Cast with Android TV to bring your app to the modern Cast experience. A web receiver is an HTML JavaScript app that runs on Cast devices, such as Chromecast and Google Nest Hub. Senders are an Android or iOS app, Chrome browser, or voice with assistant, which triggers connections to cast devices. Before Cast Connect, if you use your phone or voice to cast to Android TV, your content would play on the web receiver. You would then be forced to return to your phone to continue to browse content instead of using the Android TV remote. The goal of Cast Connect is to combine the best of both worlds. It allows users to easily start a session with their voice or mobile device and continue to control the experience with their remote to easily re-engage with your Android TV app. Let's take a look at how to add Cast Connect to your app. To prepare for Cast Connect, your Android TV app will need to use Jetpack Android X. It must also be integrated with Media Session to provide playback data, including metadata and playback state. Wire up basic callbacks such as play, pause, and seek, and specify your supported actions. To enable support for Cast Connect, you'll need to pull in the new Play Services Cast TV library, which includes all the Cast Connect APIs. You also need to provide the Android TV package name and register Android TV test device in the Cast Developer Console so your native app can properly be launched. In addition, your Android, iOS, and Chrome Center apps will need to set the flag to enable Cast Connect, which I'll show you how to do shortly. Next, let's take a look at what you need to do for a media session, which is the basis for Cast Connect. When your playback state changes, you'll need to make sure it's reflected with the playback state compat. Using a builder, set the state and available actions for your media session. These actions are available with the playback state compat and can be customized depending on the type of media being played. The playback state is used to drive the UI and to tell your players the available playback actions in their expanded controller and mini controller. Alternatively, if you're using ExoPlayer, you can use the media session connector to automatically track the playback state instead of tracking the changes manually. Additionally, you'll need to set the metadata for the content currently playing on your media session. Cast Connect will use this information for all the Cast Sender UI. Media session callbacks are used to respond to media actions triggered by Cast Connect in response to sender actions, remote buttons, and voice commands. Once you receive a callback, such as play, pause, or seek, you'll need to update your media session and perform these actions on your player. The key idea for Cast Connect is to maintain your existing functionality by sending the same media status that a web receiver would normally provide. If set up properly, your senders will receive the exact same data from the Android TV app, so they'll not need to make any additional changes besides enabling Cast Connect support. This media status is generated automatically by pulling properties from the media session, as well as additional customizations through modifiers, which I'll talk about later. Next, let's take a look at the senders. The main change you'll need to make on the sender side is simply declaring that they are compatible with a native Android TV app. This can be accomplished on Android by setting the Android receiver compatible flag to true on the launch options on the Android sender. On the iOS sender, this is done by setting the same field on the GCK launch options, which are then set on the GCK cast context. This same field is also available on the cast options on the Chrome Sender. If the Android receiver compatible is not set when you cast to an Android TV, it will open the normal receiver instead of opening your native Android TV app. Now that we have the setup complete on the senders, let's dive into what's needed to add Cast Connect to your Android TV app. First, you'll need to add the launch and load actions to your Android manifest. The launch action lets Android TV know that you support the cast protocol. You'll want to put this action in the first activity that you want to load when a session is first launched, such as your app home screen. 
A load action is required so that your Android TV app is able to handle your load requests coming from your senders. These actions are usually handled in your player activity or another activity that you use to handle your deep links. When you create a media session, you'll need to specify the current media session token to the media manager so it knows where to send the commands and get the media status. When you release the media session due to inactive playback, you should set a null token to the media manager. Here's an example of properly handling the load intent in a player activity. On create, you'll want to set the media load command callback to handle the load events. I'll talk about that more in a second. In both the on create and on new intent, you should handle the intents that are being fired to see if they are load intents from the cast SDK. Using the media manager, you can check this intent using on new intent to see if it's coming from cast connect. If it is, simply return it early and it'll be passed to the media load command callback and onload will trigger when the intent has been parsed. If not, continue handling your non-cast intent like you normally would. Here's a simple example of that media load command callback we set previously. As you can see, the on new intent onload takes in the media load request data object, which is the same kind of load request you would normally get on your web receiver and contains the same information. Parse the load request like usual, pass the information to your player to start playback and set the data on your media manager. And it's that simple. You should now have your content playing natively on your Android TV device. Next, let's take a look at handling cast-specific media commands. Previously, you saw how to set up your media session to handle simple actions like play, pause, and seek. However, the cast SDK has more advanced features that media session doesn't cover. Media command callback handles cast-specific actions, such as setting tracks for captions in different audio languages, and the ability to skip ads. Using the info passed into these callbacks, you can perform these actions on your player. Additionally, you may have noticed that Media Session doesn't cover everything your app needs to do to apply your business logic. Since the media status is the foundation of the CAST protocol, ports the playback status to the senders, and is generated from Media Session, it needs to be further customized to reflect the CAST specific properties. You can use modifiers from the Media Manager to overwrite fields, provide app specific details such as live or ads data, and provide any custom data that your web receiver would usually provide to your senders. These modifiers can be set once and will persist and be applied on top of every media status sent out until they are removed. Additionally, Cast Connect provides a media status interceptor, which allows for one last chance to check and set the values on the media status before it's sent over the wire. Common situations might be debugging, logging, adding analytics, and other business-specific tasks. Next, Let's take a look at the features of Cast Connect. We are proud to announce that Cast Connect supports our existing Cast features, including tracks, queuing, ads, and live. One new feature that's supported is the ability to fall back to the web receiver when a device attempts to connect to the Android TV device using a launch request checker. Android TV is historically a mostly single user experience, while Cast can be used by multiple users at once. There may be situations where the Cast Center user doesn't match the Android TV user and the Android TV app is unable to switch on the fly or deliver the same content from a different user. In these cases, the checker is able to check the credentials of the user attempting to connect to the Android TV and instead open the web receiver. If your Android TV app needs to be able to decide whether to launch the native app or the web receiver depending on the user credentials, you'll need to set the launch request checker in your receiver options provider. In this checker, you can override the check launch request support method. If it returns true, the native Android TV app will continue launching. But if it returns false, your web receiver will be launched instead. In this method, you're provided with a launch request, which includes the credentials data that your sender provided. Depending on your app, you can allow or disallow anonymous users, check credentials depending on the platform, and reject or allow the launch credentials if they don't meet your conditions. This allows for a ton of flexibility to let your apps perform the way you want them to. And that covers the basics of Cast Connect and how to add this exciting new feature to your existing Android TV and Cast apps. Be sure to check out our documentation, samples, and code labs for more information. And subscribe to our announcements to get the most up-to-date information about Cast. Thanks, and happy casting!